Greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations. So I want to talk about multifacetedness and multiplicity. You know, there's several things and bits and pieces that make up our lives. And we wear different social masks, we do different things. Um, I remember when I worked for Sandal, sometimes I'd be shocked when I'd see a guest, you know, meet them by the pool deck or in games and when they tell you what they did for a living you're like you are like a fortune 500 company but you're a big kid here so we show up differently and different things appeal to us and sometimes things that seem disparate and disconnected you know we also have you ever been up with somebody who when you see them order or get a place at a buffet it's like this smorgasbord of things that don't seem like they should go together and it's like wow so sometimes it's a little bit of this it's a bit of this it's a piece of this that makes us who we are in our completeness but also sometimes demonstrates and manifests what we like so this episode is gonna be called this that and the other and it's not going to be themed it's going to be a mixture a smorgasbord of potpourri of things and there's going to be other episodes like this with just some random thoughts in my head that I put together in no particular order. So here we go with Season 3's first installment of This, That and The Other. So yes. So for my non-Jamaicans who may be watching, this in Jamaican language means this, that means that, and the other means and the other. So it's this, that, and the other. So what is the first, so what is the this for this episode? The this that I want to talk about is overcharging. Overcharging. People, 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 where's your fair trading commission when you need them? <laughs> And I probably need to do some research as to find out why this is allowable. So, I'm a Pepsi drinker. I'm a confirmed. I love Pepsi. I just do. You know, I'm going to go on a fitness thing and, you know, lifestyle thing, but I'm always going to drink Pepsi. So, the regular price for Pepsi is between 100 and 120 Jamaican dollars. There are spaces that I go, you know, some cafes and hotels where they're selling the Pepsi, the same said Pepsi, for 350 or 400 plus Jamaican dollars. How is this right and acceptable? How is this righteous? This cannot be right. What kind of ridiculous markup is that? I don't know. And apparently from what I gather, it's not technically not illegal. <laughs> but how can that be justifiable? And then of course, you know, if I'm buying one bottle of Pepsi, um, in whatever the size is, for $120, when they buy them wholesale, it's even cheaper. It's going to be less than $120. How do you then justify selling it for $350 or $400 Jamaican dollars? I'm not even going to try and do the math. But then also, you know, in certain gift shops, in certain spaces, and I'm going to say hotel gift shops, <laughs> the markups are ridiculous. You know, there's a, there's a taxi company, a transportation company that is set up and legalized and formalized to transport tourists. And I've always struggled with how overpriced the charges are. And I'm like, this can't be right. And I'm, yes, this person is from abroad and even put a, a lick of something on the top. But it's crazy because I've done it. And when I worked in the tourism industry, I'd say to the drivers, you know, so what do you charge for this? And then I'd match it with what you charge, you know, like in a regular, when you charge a regular Jamaican taxi. And I keep thinking, how are we accepting this level of price gouging this overcharging it's crazy you know in jamaica the running joke is that in certain spaces uptown spaces <laughs> or in certain pricey places certain things are allowed is that really what it is um i'm curious you know so i'm actually telling you what here's what i promise to do i promise to actually do some formal research and contact the fair trading commission and do some research this and find out why and how this is allowed this 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 rampant overcharging where something is like an established price for something but in one space you're charging two three hundred four hundred dollars more than the regular space for that item 
Here's the last one I'm going to share with the overcharging. That's a kind of different manifestation. So in some restaurants in Jamaica, so in Jamaica, there's a very popular brand called True Juice, right? And the juice are very popular. There's a nice wide range of juices. Some people complain that they're a little sweet. In some restaurants, when you go and you order a glass of fruit punch, <laughs> they're pouring from a bottle of True Juice one glass that they're charging you more for the glass than the bottle of True Juice glass. <laughs> So as a result, I never order fruit juice or anything in restaurants because that's crazy, 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 crazy. So I promise to get back to you with my research on overcharging. What is the dot? The dot for this episode is three new brands. And if you notice, the banner says three new bands to me <laughs> because when I was talking to my producer, Michael Sean Harris, Michael Big himself, Michael was like, my favorite those aren't new. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He's like, what are them? Is that maybe at least five years? And I'm like, what are you talking about? So that's how we said, let's call it three new brands to me. First, Grace has a very interesting array of sauces. My favorite is the sweet and spicy. Oh my lord, it's so nice. So it has it, it has a chiliest type of flavor. You can see the bits of pepper in it and then the sweetness. Awesome, 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 awesome. Grace Kennedy, big up yourself. This this sauce is awesome. And guess what? I don't know if it's COVID or whatever, but my supermarket didn't have it for like three months the other day. Okay, this is not acceptable. Can't run out of the Grace Sweet and Spicy Sauce. Second brand, Bad Dog. OMG. I'm just going to say Bad Dog to the world. And I have to be clear and specific. Bad dog jerk. The regular one is fine, but the jerk gives me life. And it's awesome. And the sausage is much longer than other sausages. Some people say it's too salt. I will deal with the salt. But bad dog, pick up yourself. And I love the way they brand it. And there's, you know, there's bad dog hot dog stands at different locations. And I like that. And they give you added fixings and toppings. And it almost it matches up for me to like. The New York hot dog, one of for me, the my defining New York experiences was in like getting a, a, new, a hot dog on the road in New York with the sauerkraut and all these other things. And so bad dog, the bad dog stands now have that. You can get jalapenos, you can get cheese, you can get um, all sorts of things added. But the sausage itself is so delicious. And again, I don't know if it's COVID. There's a period where my supermarket did not have any bad dog jerk for like two months. Come on, people. You can't get us hooked on a product, and then we have issues getting it. So let's sort that out. Brand number three, St. Mary's Chips. Woo! Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. There's some people who are major fans and aficionados of another brand. It starts with C. I shall not call their name. <laughs> It's okay, but for me, it's all about St. Mary's. Um, the taste, the texture, um, the, the quality. I also love the range. So they have extra country, they have the regular, they have extra country, they now have plantain. And one of my favorite is the onion and cheese that comes in a light blue package. Yes, St. Mary's, yes, 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 yes. Big up on the self, big up on the self. So, yeah, bigging up three brands that are new to me because sometimes you only complain. Bad dog jerk, St. Mary's, in particular, the onion and cheese, and Grace, Grace's spicy sweet sauce. Big up on the salad. Yay! And the R. Uh, netiquette. And I have to say the name of a colleague of mine who has made her transition to the other plane, Christine Bell, fabulous woman of communication, and theater. Christine um, used to allow me to advertise my plays um, in the Gleaner, on her Gleaner account. And she also got me some gigs to work with some of her clients. So in one of these situations, she sent an email, right? And apparently, you know, blind copied me. <laughs> I took up my enough, very plentiful self and responded to everybody. He called me and said, 
um, Fabian, I actually had blind copied you. So the client didn't necessarily know that you were copied. I just was keeping you in the loop. And this is my first foray into this idea of netiquette. And what is netiquette? And netiquette is etiquette or norms or best practices for the internet and such things. Pet peeve number one of mine. So yes, I'm sure Christine had that one where you're blind copy somebody and they jump and reply and add their name. Because the whole idea is you did not necessarily want the other people on the email to know the person was copying. My big, big, big peeve now, pet peeve, is that reply all has become the new reply. Why, people? Saints, saints, why? No, no, no. This cannot continue. Now, let's say Jennifer invites 20 of us to a meeting. Jennifer is the one who is, whether she's hosting the meeting or she's doing support, and you are to reply to Jennifer to say whether you're attending or not. I, as one of the invitees, I don't care if you're going. So when you reply all, so all the other 19 of us, plus Jennifer, now no, you're not going, you can't come, you might come. We don't care. It also means I'm now going to get 19 other emails saying yes, no, maybe so. So, you know, I end up being that guy who after the second or the third has to say, okay, colleagues, can we please desist from replying all but it's become the norm and even i'm going to say in spaces I and mean, with people who i think should know better no so you only reply all when your reply is relevant and pertinent to everybody who's emailed but if somebody invites you to a meeting you only need to respond to the person who invited you you don't have to reply all please people let us stop it stop it stop it stop it stop it stop it forwarding now, this forwarding, just forwarding streams of emails to people have gotten people in trouble, including in some serious ways, in like confidential information. So sometimes there's an email stream, you know, back and forth, a response, and then people get added to the stream who were not necessarily in the beginning. So you have to go through and delete. First of all, it's, it's really, for me, a little taxing to get, you know, you get added to the stream 15 emails in, and you have to go back and read all of that. But sometimes there's information that I didn't need to know. So sometimes I've heard cases of people's salary, you know, personal information about people's personal information, health status that was shared, you know, at a confidential level. And then you add somebody else to the stream. But if they scroll down and have the time and are curious or nosy enough, they'll see everything else that came before problematic. Um, or sometimes people were, let's say, you know, they were talking about me. Fabian is such an idiot and I can't stand him and he's so difficult blah, 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 in the early part of the stream. And then you add me later because something else comes up and I scroll down. Yeah. So let's be careful about that, that, that automatic, you know, forwarding. Check and see, does everything in the stream need to be forwarded? Another one of mine that's becoming more and more popular. So saints, please desist from this practice as well. So you send someone an email and let's say the email title is the mango tree. That person, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or somebody else in the stream, sends you another email about something completely different that has nothing to do with the mango tree, with the same title, the mango tree. <laughs> of course, what's going to happen? Later, if you want to try and find that email, and you think, let me type in the subject, it won't come up because they sent it with the title, The Manga Tree. <laughs> Delete the old title and put the new one. Because, yeah, sometimes it's just easier and quicker. You know, if your brain works like mine, sometimes you get an email from somebody and something unrelated pops into your head, but put, don't send it with this old title. That doesn't help anyone and it causes confusion. And it's happened to me sometimes, I'm looking for something. You know, probably a while later, and I'm searching with the subject, and I, then I go, then I remember, oh, he or she sent it with the old title. No, I'm saying no, 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 no. Last etiquette thing: appropriate email addresses. <laughs> we and I talk about this in my workshops. You know, in job career seeking, um, and even you know, prof professionalism workshops. If your email is goodasfidem at gmail, 
you know, take a gal man and don't care at Hotmail. <laughs> you may not want to use this email address for professional purposes <laughs> or applying for a job. Shut up in life. You know, at Yahoo, might cause some concern when you're applying for work or the scammer them there at Gmail might be problematic. <laughs> so my people, my people, you can have what I call a keyless email or the regular fun email. But for things like work and professional things, have another one. And a simple format is some version of your name. You know, if it's taken, you might have to add numbers or symbols or whatever, but have an email address. That's your professional, more formal email. And then can you have the fun, light, keyless one that you use for those things? So you're not using them for jobs and other professional things. Another thing, when more companies are doing this now is um, a lot of people using their personal email addresses for work. Mm -mm, separation of church and state. Separation from work and your life. You know, so if you don't have a formal, um, proper you know, work company email has your name and the company, then create an email address that's for work. Yeah, I just believe separation. I don't want to be going through my personal email and a bag of work things in there. Um, so that's my suggestion. You know, if your company doesn't have that system where everybody gets a work email, and like I said, more and more companies are doing that now, then create one for yourself. Um, so you get this separation um, of the different aspects and aspects as, um, areas of your life. You're separating the this from the that from the other. So I hope you enjoyed and liked this. And it's going to come back, this, that, and the other, when I have some random streams of thought in my head. And I don't necessarily want to do a whole show on that. I'm just going to put them together. So click, like, subscribe, share all these good things. This has been episode six in season three. And this one was called This, That, Peace, love, and message.